Does anybody else need assistance with PrimeGov? Okay, I'm going to mute Lisa, myself so you need me. Thank you, Alan. Lisa, yeah, this is Francis. Uh, now, since we're on video conference, you don't need to call roll at the beginning of the meeting, uh, but you will need to ask for a voice vote from uh, Ms. Morales. And the only member uh, we have who isn't here yet is uh, Michael Dover and then Cecilia Robinson. Is Tom McDaniel joining us today? Uh, yes, he's uh, attempting to get on to Zoom. Mark, okay. you. I recall last week he had problems and had to be on his iPhone and vote uh, by voice. He finally gave up. His iPhone gave out or something. We lost him. I think our city should be awarding technology badges of honor. <laughs> yes, especially to all the trustees and board members. Well, definitely. I can only imagine how challenging this is for all of you um, through all your meetings. And we are we are very appreciative of your calmness and patience. Well, I thank you, Ms. Lowe. Very, very appreciated. Thank you. Mark, do you have an update on Mr. McDaniel? Does anyone have an update on Mr. Beck? This is Mike Dover. Um, I couldn't get on Zoom. I'm on audio only, which is probably good for you guys because you won't be able to see me in my backyard sitting in my underwear. So, <laughs> not a pretty picture. Hello. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to move. Mr. Dover, now. what number are you calling in from? Mr. Dover, what is your phone number? My phone number? Yes. Hello? My, my cell number is that I'm on is 405-595-7402. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's our chairman. There's Tom. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Dover, this is Lisa. Are you going to be on Prime Gov as well? Lisa, you'll have to get roll call. Uh, you'll have to get voice votes from uh, Ms. Morales and Mr. Dover. Thank you. See if you can. Good morning, everyone. Or is a huge echo from Tom? Yeah, I think Mr. McDaniel has audio on two devices. Yeah, Mark, you need to turn off all the speakers in the room. Except here. Try it now. No, try, try talking, man. Is that better? There's still an echo. Yeah, you look great. Thank you. Thank you. How about now? I don't know. Audio hear that. is very low. I'll back up a little. now perfect i love perfect 
Are we ready? Mr. Chairman, you are good to go. It's time to read the script and then call the meeting to order. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to everyone and welcome. We are delighted to have a few announcements to make regarding the video conference meeting. First, if the video conference is disconnected at any time during the meeting, the meeting will be stopped and reconvened once the audio video connection is restored. If communications are unable to be restored within 15 minutes, items remaining for consideration will be continued at 11.30 a.m. on June 25, 2020, via video conference. Second, the agenda and document are located on okc.gov. Third, to speak on a certain agenda item, please call in advance of the meeting to 405-297-3467 or text your request in advance of the meeting to 405-205-4195. Include your name, the agenda item number, and the reason you would like to speak. Please submit your request prior to the beginning of the meeting to avoid receiving your request after your item has been considered. City staff will attempt to submit requests received during the meeting to process them to the meeting chair. Finally, to speak under the heading comments by board, staff, and citizens, please call 405-297-3467 or text 405-205-4195. Please list your name, your address, phone number, and the subject on which you wish to address the board. Now I would I ask, uh, do we have a quorum present? Yes, you have a quorum present, Mr. Chair. Thank you. In that case, we will call the meeting to order. This is the meeting of the MAPS 3 Citizens Advisory Board for June the 25th, 2020, and is now been called to order. The second item on the agenda would be a consideration of the minutes. We have been furnished with copy of, copies of the minutes of our May 28th, 2020 Advisory Board meeting. Are there additions or corrections? Shall we approve them? I move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. That they be approved. All in favor say yes. Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Minutes are approved. That brings us to item three the revenue and expenditure report for the period ending May the 31st. David? Yes, sir. You have in your packet the uh... Revenue and expenditure report for the period ending May 31st, 20 in its usual form. Uh, real quickly on the revenue side for the month, we have $198,812. Uh, most of that is interest. Fiscal year of $3,802,771 and total of $834,730,956. On the expenditure side for the month, we have $6,341,038 dollars fiscal year of 88 million seven hundred thirty six thousand two hundred fifty eight and total expenditures of six hundred sixty eight million three hundred seventeen thousand and ten dollars then you also have the budget and obligations report in your packet and i will try to answer any questions if you have any any questions for david <laughs> mr mcdaniel this is lisa yes um, I need to do a voice um, vote for Mr. Dover and Ms. Morales on the minutes before we can go to this item so that we can close this vote. That would just be great. Go right ahead. Sorry. Um, no problem. Mr. Dover, how do you vote on the minutes? Aye. And Ms. Morales? Aye. Thank you, Lisa. The motion Thank has passed. You. All 
right, we are now considering item three on the agenda, the revenue and the expenditure report. Are there any questions? David, this Shall is Shall we receive it? David, this is Mike Adams. I, uh, I'm trying to call up. I'm having trouble seeing. I was, when I looked at it the other day, I was curious about how we've handled the money that we've allocated uh, to the fairgrounds and to the uh, convention center, are they still being shown in our budget or are we gonna manage those projects and how is this gonna work? They're still in, in the budgets. What we did as far as the fairgrounds is we created an, another line item within the budget that shows the 9 million that will go to MAPS 4. We still have to have that within our accounts. And, and as it is spent, it will be spent towards the MAPS 4, but it, it will not be transferred over because of legal issues. And same thing with Union Station, lower park money. There's another line item on the budget within the park to show that money. But yes, it's still in the mix in, in these financials. Or in the budget and obligations report where it shows the fairgrounds has 9.6 million left. That, that includes the 9 million that's going toward the arena. Yes, sir, it does. Okay. And likewise, on the, on the park, the 41 million includes the 19 million that's going to the uh, uh, Union Station. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. I, I move to receive the report. We have now a report by Taylor. discussion? Lisa, you may call the roll. Mr. Dover, how do you vote on this item? Mr. Dover? Aye. Ms. Morales? Aye. Vote right, are you able to vote? Has everybody voted that it tends to vote? We're waiting for Mr. Boatwright. Aye. The motion passed. That takes us to item four on the agenda, David. Yes, sir. Item four is recommend approval of change order number 26, MAPS 3 Convention Center, increase of $45,690, project M3-C003. So as we continue along with construction, there are things that come up and this change order addresses those. Um, there's a light fixture revision. <clears throat> there is some uh, power for heat trace controls that were left out of the plans. The system, the, the system commissioning team has asked for um, some changes, $14,000 in there. Um, some new material between uh, the, the concrete pavers and the curb. That was a lessons learned during Project 180 that they've requested that we add to the project. And going on down, you'll see that no, item number seven is actually a credit of $21,000. So these, these items go both ways, but these are what we would call just routine construction items as the project continues on. And this does come with the uh, approval from the subcommittee, Convention Center subcommittee. Questions or comments? <clears throat> Shall we? Then move the measure by Mr. Town and by Council that we approve it. Those that can vote electronically vote, and future, you may call the roll. Mr. Dover? Aye. Ms. Morales? Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Boatwright? Aye. Thank you. Motion. The motion has been approved. Item five, David. <clears throat> Item five is recommend approval of amendment number eight to contract for landscaping art architectural services with Hargraves Jones Landscape Architecture DPC maps three park 
increase of $134,770 project M3-P006. <clears throat> I know that we're all still fixated now on the lower part, finishing that, but what this amendment does is, is cleans up some items from the, the upper park. If you remember, it, it rained pretty much all of April, May, and June last year and extended our construction period out. And uh, Hargraves had people in the field and on the ground and answering uh, requests for proposals and, and uh, processing claims. So they had an extension of services. So about half of this fee is for that extension of services through those months of, of construction that were unforeseen. Then the other half does relate to the lower park and it has to do with some of the changes that the operator has requested, um, various things that have gone on down there with utilities and, and such things like that. So this comes also with the approval from the park subcommittee. Any questions or comments? It's been moved by Kimberly Lowe and seconded by Nathaniel Harding that we uh, recommend approval. Further discussion? All in favor say yay. Uh, on the electronic, if you will vote, and then Lisa, if you'll call the roll. Mr. Dover? Aye. Ms. Morales? Aye. Thank you. All right, uh, item six, David, a presentation. Right, we like to bring to you periodically the progress on various projects. Today, Gavin McMillian from Hargraves Jones is here to give you an update on the lower park. So I'd like to turn it over to Gavin. Welcome, Gavin. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for uh, that previous approval to, to keep on going. Um, we are at the stage for the, the lower park. We are at the 95% design uh, plans and specs. And uh, so we want to bring to you an update of where we're at. And uh, as a prelude to coming back next month uh, and asking for final approval to go to city council and then out to bid. Uh, so this has been a long road for all of us. Um, and uh, I just quickly want to go through the, where we've been, uh, the features of the lower park and the costs and schedule. Uh, so next. Uh, Court Shore, the vision uh, is, is almost complete. Uh, the upper park has been great success. The lower park, uh, although it's you know one half of the uh, of the Cisatel Park, um, it repeats several things, but it has a slightly different uh, take on uh, several things. So in the lower park, we have a, a sporting component that we don't have in the upper park. Um, the the uh, promenade continues all the way down to the river. Um, and uh, but it's a much more relaxed uh, and casual park than the upper park. So it, it's, it's relating more to moving from downtown uh, towards the river. Next. Uh, here is the current design uh, after going through uh, several rounds with the uh, stakeholders and the operator and uh, the city departments. Uh, the lower park, I'll just go from uh, clockwise from top to bottom. Uh, we have one uh, synthetic soccer field. We have a sports pavilion. We have about 220 existing trees we're keeping, which is very different than the upper park. We only had uh, two trees in front of Union Station that we, we, we kept. So there's about, uh, there'll be a, a feeling of a forest in the uh, north end of the park. Uh, we have uh, an area called the Whispering Pines uh, that, that'll be different than the upper park. Uh, an area just with pine trees and, and meadows. We have the promenade coming all the way down from Skydance Bridge. Uh, we have the sports area, sports courts, uh, which uh, features futsal, uh, pickleball, and uh, two basketball courts. You can see them in the blue. Uh, then we come past the out parcel uh, between 11th and 12th Street, uh, the area that we call the hollow, which is the lowest area of the site, uh, the fields uh, between uh, 12th and 14th Street, the uh, knuckle plaza at the uh, uh, as the promenade turns back into Robinson, and finally the Overlock Hill uh, at, at the southern end of the site. Um, and then eventually uh, the next stage would be to connecting uh, this MAPS project to the river 
uh, with collaboration with the Parks Department. Next. So as you remember, in the upper park, we went out to bid with uh, several ad alternates in hopeful of uh, getting a, a, a good value. And we're feeling positive uh, we'll be able to do the same thing in the lower park. So we have some ad alternates here. Uh, basically, um, ad alternate number one is adding uh, night lighting to uh, the soccer fields, uh, adding shade structures to the soccer fields. Uh, number three is adding uh, nature play elements within the existing trees uh, for kids. Uh, the, the kids have been very successful in the upper park. Uh, number four is adding night lighting to the sports courts. Number five is that pink squiggly line, the woodland trail that winds its way through the fields. Number six is a second building we call the Hill Pavilion. Uh, so second uh, group of restrooms. And finally, uh, the extension of the promenade uh, from 14th Street uh, down to 15th Street. Uh, so uh, lots of goodies there uh, that we hope uh, to get a good price on. Next. So we'll just quickly go through again that order of things, the soccer fields. Um, one of the interesting things that come out of that is a potential partnership with Fields and Futures uh, that has an educational program for youth um, and they're willing to add in kind or, or donation in some part of the soccer field. Uh, so we're, we're working with them to bring value to that. So uh, one soccer field there. Next. Uh, the sports pavilion here, we're, we're kind of hanging over 10th Street. You see the soccer field in the background. Uh, the sports pavilion is about the size of the cafe in the upper park. And to the right, you can see the existing trees uh, starting to uh, form the woodland there. Next. Um, as I mentioned before, we wanted to add a, a children's play component here, but not as uh, formal as the upper park. So this nature play area is more using natural materials, boulders, logs, uh, vegetation, and just creating some interest for kids uh, within the existing uh, forest. Next. Uh, here we're over I-40, looking back at the uh, wood of the area as the promenade comes down from Skydance. And on the left-hand side, you can start seeing the sports courts area with futsal at this end, uh, pickleball in the middle, and basketball uh, just far right. And we're hoping uh, the Thunder will uh, also donate uh, the finishes to uh, the courts. Next. Uh, Whispering Pines area, so a uh, big area of conifers, which is different. So as you're driving up Robinson towards uh, the city, you'll see sky dance in the background uh, through the pine trees. And as you're walking up the promenade, you'll definitely feel and hear the wind. Next. Uh, the promenade is a continuation of the upper park. Uh, so the, the paving finishes, the, the furniture and the lighting continues all the way down. Next. Uh, the hollow area, um, this is the area, uh, the lowest point of the site. We are also uh, facing uh, a low point and, and potential flooding. We're closer to the river. Uh, so this is the area uh, that will uh, feature that. Next. And here we are hovering over the fields, looking towards the river in the background. Uh, you can see the Overlook Hill there. It's about 29 feet high. Uh, and through the trees, you can see the end of the, the promenade with the, what we're calling Knuckle Plaza and the Hill Pavilion, uh, which is an ad alternate. Next. And here we are hovering over the river, looking uh, back to uh, the city. Uh, Overlook Hill there, uh, the windiness is the uh, woodland walkway. You can see the Hill Pavilion in the background, Knuckle Plaza and Robinson Avenue. Next. And here we are on the ground on the promenade with Knuckle Plaza, uh, the Hill Pavilion there. Uh, this is our second uh, place for uh, public art. Uh, so we have one, well, we did have one piece in the upper park that's still being resolved. Uh, this would be the second piece in the lower park. Next. Uh, we're repeating um, much of the materials and finishes. Um, as I said, we have about uh, blessed with uh, 220 existing trees we'll be adding another uh, uh, 700 trees. So in the tree count, we're about the same as the upper park, uh, but uh, it's much more relaxed down here. So it's more about different grasses and perennials. Uh, the area will be 100% irrigated uh, as well. Next. 
Uh, I'll just talk briefly about the two pavilions on, on behalf of uh, 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 Butzer Architecture. Uh, the sports pavilion is about five and a half thousand square feet, uh, which also includes an outdoor seating area uh, for about 64 people. It repeats the same language as the uh, upper park. Next. Uh, it's enclosed area includes uh, male and female restrooms and also a family restroom. It has a, a 15, uh, 1500, sorry, a 150 square feet concession area uh, for uh, feeding the, the, the kids playing sports, but also uh, families coming to, to picnic. There's a much bigger area for, for the uh, operator to have storage and equipment rental and dumpster areas to the right here. Uh, again, it repeats the same sort of materials. Next. Uh, here's a view sitting underneath it, uh, which you'd be able to look uh, not only onto the soccer fields, but also to the uh, shaded area. Next. And here's a view from the park side uh, with the red doors, much like the red in the cafe in the upper park. Um, and that's the, uh, the restroom. So there's obviously where the restrooms are for the kids. Next. Uh, the second uh, building is the Hill Pavilion, and this is an ad alternate uh, for the southern end of the site. Uh, again, it repeats the restrooms, male, female, male, female, and family. Uh, it includes a staff room for the operator and a little bit of uh, uh, trash area and storage. And again, uh, seating for uh, 64 people sitting outside. Next. Um, the materials are, are again repeated from the upper park, from the brick to the, the wood and the ceiling, uh, the standing seam on the roof, but this time we're using uh, a, uh, a metal uh, screen accent for the vertical walls to uh, avoid any oil canning. Next. Okay, uh, costs. Uh, our budget was uh, 20.5 million and uh, we're, we're just, just there. Um, so we're feeling good about that. Um, also, um, the ad alternates from one to seven that I talked about, we have about uh, $4.4 .4 million worth of ad alternates there. Um, so hopefully we'll be in the position to pick and choose uh, after bids come back for that. Thank you. Uh, next one. Uh, last but not least, schedule. Uh, we are uh, on the verge of finishing final plans and specs. Uh, so the 95% are circulating now for city department reviews. Uh, we are hoping to come back to you next month with 100% uh, uh, plans and specs and uh, your approval to go to city council to go out to bid in uh, August and uh, start construction uh, this year, uh, about an 18 month construction and uh, completing in April uh, 2022 um, and having another opening for a park. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, this is uh, the completion of the, the vision and we're excited to, to get going again. Um, and I, uh, I'm happy to uh, answer any questions. Questions? This is Mike Adams, I'll ask a question. Uh, Gavin, uh, the upper park was very organic in design, and in, in the park you seem to be deliberately maintaining the grid pattern, for the east-west sidewalks. And I'm just curious as to what the uh, what the thought process was there. Yes, you, you're correct. Um, we've uh, the, uh, the leg of the the uh, lower park is only one block wide uh, for, for most of its length and like the upper park, which is two blocks wide. Um, so we're, um, we're basically where we're sh closing down the roads um, and where we're, at, we're adding sidewalks where uh, the side, original sidewalks were, actually were. So we want to make sure in the, the development that happens either side of the park in, in the coming uh, months and years. Uh, that the, there's a strong pedestrian connection just to walk straight through the park, uh, east to west. Um, and that kind of creates and defines these spaces. So the, the fields down the other end, the, the two blocks between 12th and 14th, the operator kind of has ideas that, you know, eventually that might become a, a, an urban farm or a, a community supported agriculture, uh, but it can also be used for temporary events and, and but just flying kites and throwing frisbees or playing ball. Uh, so it's 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 uh, it's kind of framing that informality. 
And then you're calling the, the gathering area at the south of the park Knuckle Plaza. Is that, where'd that name come from? Does, is that connotate something? Uh, no, it's just, just simply like your, your finger, uh, it kind of has the knuckle and it kind of bends and turns. So we wanted to acknowledge the, 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 the broad sweep of the, the promenade as it comes to the south. Um, it hits that plaza and then the promenade actually um, uh, goes parallel to, to Robinson to make that crossing uh, safe at uh, 15th and, and Robinson for pedestrians. Okay. And, and then it, my, creates a, it creates a great opportunity for the, the art piece. Okay. And then my, my, my next comment, I guess, every, uh, we've talked in the past about connecting the park to the river. And I think even the presentation the park department did in the past, connecting to the south side of the river. And all those, all those uh, designs envision a pedestrian bridge across the river. I assume that bridge would have to be elevated. And so in, in the design of the hill, are we, are we considering that as a launching pad uh, to get the elevation up to, to provide for a pedestrian bridge across there? How is that connection going to work? I don't, you know, I, don't, I can't envision a pedestrian bridge taking off from the corner of 15th and Robinson uh, right there at the street. But uh, I didn't know what, you know, kind of, you know, what's the design here? I, you know, I'd hate to see us, you know, build the hill and then come down later and then have to build another elevated area or, or not, or bulldoze part of that to get the, uh, the elevation up for the, for the uh, pedestrian bridge. So what's the, what's the design there? Um, well, right now the, the Parks Department's taking the first pass at, at their scheme. So the, there's, there's gonna to have to be a, a meeting of the minds and, and coordination with how to make uh, the connections across 15th work. And I'm sure the bridge will be, will be part of that. You have, um, have to be elevated, right? I mean, You'll be, eventually have to be up at the same level. Well, there's quite a there's quite an elevation change um, from 15th because 15th is kind of the the it acts as well, it is a levee basically, um, so it's quite high. Uh, so 15th is higher than most of the lower park. But it's not uh, higher than the, the the bridges across the river, and I assume the pedestrian bridge is going to be basically at those elevations. Um, I you know I I I can't answer all that. Uh, uh, Mike, uh, but I, I think, you know, having done a couple of pedestrian bridges, there, there could be enough elevation to, to still have the grade crossing of 15 at, at grade and launch the bridge off. Okay. Uh, because of the navigable height uh, for clearance uh, to the river is, is not that great here. And, the, and, and so there's no, I don't see any like a footpath or anything going up to the top of the hill. So if it's supposed to be an observation point or an overlook, we just scrambled off the side of it. Yeah, well, what we we found, and, and uh, Maureen Heffernan from the foundation said this yesterday at, at subcommittee uh, with, with the upper park with the hill, people just go up there. <laughs> uh, they can't help themselves, even though it's damn windy. Uh, they, they just do it. Well, I mean, we, you know, we build a lot of sidewalks and footpaths and kind of encourage people to stay on them. And so I just wanted to know if, you know, if that was the intent there or, or maybe wanted a little winding maybe not a whole paved sidewalk, but a winding footpath or something that kind of encouraged folks to go up, so. M Mr. Adams, could I comment please? Sure. This is Kim. Um, one of the things that the Overlook Hill does is replicate the same hill that's in the upper park. So that it's not it's not a steep climb like you would think of climbing up a, a side of a large hill or, or a mountain, but something that, that flows easily just as it does in the upper park. And one of the reasons for doing that was our original um, focus groups talked about the fact that there were a lot of um, organizations and people that wanted to have some type of music performances down in the lower park, not as, um, as programmed or as um, professional, if you will, as in the upper park where we have the stage. So Knuckle Plaza becomes a place where a stage could be erected so that a, any type of performance could, have, um, could happen there. And then just as we did at our grand opening for the upper park, people sat on that promontory hill looking onto the stage. It also gives you a view of looking at the Skydance Bridge when you're on that hill. You can see Devon and some of the taller buildings. And then if you look south, you have a great view of the river and, and I believe even some of the boathouse district. So it, um, it becomes an area of exploration, much different than it is on the ground. 
Right. I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, against the hill. I was just trying to encourage folks maybe to, to go up there because I think it will be a good view to look back to the north and as well down the river. So I was just wondering how maybe a footpath or something to kind of encourage folks to go up it. So that was all. Other questions or comments? All right, thank you, Gavin. I appreciate the uh, presentation. Uh, let's go to item seven then, David. Yes, sir. Item seven is approved change order number three, MAPS 3 Bennett Event Center improvements, increase $39,505.27, project M3-F002G. <clears throat> so you recall that we have a contractor out there uh, doing some of the, the finish up items um, from the from the construction and then some new items, but um, the largest piece of this change order is the control joint cement replacement. Um, some of that stuff didn't perform really well, so we we're replacing that sealant. That this is one of those things that you know from the previous contractor. So um, then also the schedule modification. So there's a zero cost, but there were 75 days added to this uh, contract. And that was because the Bennett Center was used as a COVID-19 test site and they couldn't go in there and work. So again, it's no cost, it just extends the contract so that they don't get liquidated damages and everything is still uh, on schedule. This comes with the approval from the Fairground Subcommittee. Questions or comments for David? Shall we approve it? Motion by Todd Stone, second by Bob Nalen. Vote electronically if you favor it or oppose it. And Lisa, if you'll call the roll. Mr. Dover? Aye. Ms. Morales? Ms. Morales, are you there? I will show her his absence since I don't hear her. All right then. I, we do you hear that? Yes. Okay. Okay, for vote of the uh, the resolution is uh, unanimously passed and approved. Uh, let's go to item eight. Then. Item eight is recommend approval of final acceptance maps three sidewalks phase four project two improvements accepting the project and placing the maintenance bond into effect project M3-W004A. So this is final acceptance of sidewalk project. Darren Scott from Guernsey is here to show you how uh, this project wrapped up. So I'd like to turn it over to Darren. Well, good morning board. Uh, we're excited to be here for final acceptance on uh, project two of the phase four sidewalks. This is the, the last batch of alignments that we worked on. Um, on the next slide, you'll see the phase two or project two alignments were pretty much scattered across the city. We had seven alignments and two alternates that were included. We were able to do the alternates as well. So in total, we had about six and a half miles of sidewalk with about $1.8 million in construction cost, which was slightly under the the estimated original uh, contract. On the next slide, you'll see the first alignment that we highlight is Penn Avenue, um, 36, Southwest 36th Street to uh, Southwest 29th. And then we had a little bit of a gap and we picked back up at Southwest 23rd to Southwest 15th. So the uh, sidewalk you're looking at here is around Southwest 30th, looking to the south uh, across some commercial buildings. On the next slide, you'll kind of see the overall alignment. Like I said, we kind of had two different parts. Uh, there was um, quite a few neighborhoods in the area. So we were able to pick up uh, some good connections from the neighborhood, uh, crossed over a railroad track that the, the track itself, we didn't do anything within that right away. So that's a connection that'll need to be done at later. Went across the Trinity Rail Station and then ended at the, the old school that's no longer in service um, and then pick back up um, to the north and um, 
or to the south, excuse me, and ended up at the um, South Grand Trail connection. So again, completed a, a well needed alignment. There's a lot of foot traffic out here when we first started. So it was a good connection. The next alignment was Meridian uh, is Southwest 29 to Newcastle Road or essentially the airport interchange. Uh, the view here is at Southwest 36. This uh, alignment was probably the most challenging because of the right-of-way issues, narrow right-of-way along Meridian and had to acquire a lot of, uh, a lot of property. But in total about uh, 0.6, a little over 0.6 miles of sidewalk on the next slide, you'll see uh, the, the general area where we were working uh, to the south, like I said, ended at Newcastle Road and ran uh, to the north to Southwest 29th that eventually, that it connects to the, the other sidewalk that runs all the way up to I-40 in the river. So kind of completed a, another connection here, uh, primarily a wide industrial commercial area, but there are some, uh, residential neighborhoods that we were able to, to get close to for some connections. Uh, Memorial Road is the next alignment that we worked on uh, up north from essentially Hefner Parkway over to May, about a mile worth of uh, sidewalk. This one, uh, the picture you see is we provided bus stop pads and then the city came back in and added these new shelters. So definitely upgrades to the bus stops. Um, the next slide you'll see primarily uh, hotels on the west end, uh, a lot of more development that, that will occur there, provide connections across, uh, when a, when a, by the uh, uh, run apartments, I believe there, uh, there by Clearbrook, and then continued over to May towards the new development at the corner of May and Memorial. Uh, the next alignment was Lincoln, uh, I-44 to south to northeast 38, a little over a mile. Uh, the picture here is in front of the Jim Thorpe building. Um, so we, this one was, we had the most challenge with cross slopes. You can see here we had to put a, a decent sized curb up to, to manage that, but we, we were able to successfully get the sidewalk through there. On the next slide, you'll see uh, one thing that we did do on this one, originally, if you look at the north section, um, it, it was all supposed to be on the uh, east side. But when we got to the very north end, it was just a wooded area. So we thought it made sense to move it over to the west, which we did. And then we were able to connect up more businesses and then a, a fairly large uh, Lincoln apartment complex over on the west of our, of our alignment. So we, we felt like that made a, a lot of sense. Um, this one's another one that's very well used. Uh, the Infant Crisis Center's there, Red Rock is there. So there's a lot of uh, pedestrian traffic to those uh, businesses. So uh, another well, well needed alignment. And it also connects to the south all the way down to the capital area. Uh, the next alignment is Northwest 50th. Um, this one was kind of was a two part uh, alignment as well. Portland Avenue to Lake Hefner Parkway uh, and then jumped across Lake Hefner and then picked back up at Hamilton and ended at May. Uh, the picture you're looking at here is the in front of the Citadel Apartments uh, on the east side and in, in all it was about 0.8 miles of sidewalk. Uh, the next slide uh, you'll see Again, the, kind of the split. This one, uh, we connected into the uh, I-44 trail. Um, and then uh, it, it also uh, finished up a lot of uh, connections from some of the other sidewalk projects that were, that were ongoing. So uh, again, th this one is close to our office. So I know our staff use this one quite a bit because it helps complete a big loop for us to, to walk at lunch. Uh, but another well-needed alignment. Uh, the next one is Reno. This one's out by the fairgrounds, uh, Portland to May. Uh, and on, when we were looking at the sidewalks, the right away dictated a lot of where we put the, where we had to put the sidewalk. This one along Reno, we had a lot of right away, so we could see the sidewalk a lot further off. So in general, we like to keep them further off the road, but 
we weren't always able to do that, but I think this one looks really nice being pushed off of the, the road. This is in front of the, the Raining Horse Association building. The next slide shows the, uh, basically we, we ended at May, uh, or I'm sorry, at Portland near the, uh, the OSU OKC campus. And underneath I-44, uh, across the fairground, entry, south entry, and then ended up over at May uh, to, to connect up to the other connection on May Avenue that runs north and south. And then the final alignment was uh, council. This was an alternate, uh, about 0.9 miles of sidewalk. Uh, this from Wilshire to Britain, so just south of uh, 44, or uh, I'm sorry, Northwest Highway running south. Uh, this view here is in front of the Buchanan Funeral Home looking south uh, along council. The next slide you'll see, uh, like I mentioned on the north end, uh, you're close to Walmart, kind of the side entry to Walmart. And as you go south, uh, then you start picking up a lot of residential neighborhoods. Um, there's two very large additions, Wilshire, Wilshire Ridge, and then on the other side, on the west side is Aspen and Harvest Hills neighborhoods. So again, I'm picking up a lot of, uh, a lot of neighborhoods and providing good connections to the commercial areas. So a little on the next slide, a few stats on the project. We, uh, we had about 1,700 linear foot of sidewalk curb. A lot of that is making up cross slopes and, and making sure we have our, our ADA tolerances in place. Uh, 11 signal, pedestrian signals. So we improved some intersections, about 14,000 square yards of sidewalk, 215 ramps, and eight upgraded bus stop pads. So all in all, a good project. Uh, our construction, our design team was, was Guernsey, us, and then Limke was our surveyors. And then we had excellent contractor with MTZ. They were great to work with. And then uh, TLS was the pedestrian signal contractor. So all in all, a good project. And we feel like we had good success and uh, accomplished what we wanted to accomplish with the, the alignments. So with that, do you guys have any questions? Questions, anyone? Darren, thank you for that presentation. Thank you guys for a great job. Thank you. Shall we approve it? Been moved by Nathaniel Harding and taken by Kimberly Lowe that we approve this. Uh, all in favor say yes or call the roll if you would. Uh, Lisa? Mr. Dover? Aye. Ms. Morales? Ms. Morales? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. It is passed unanimously. Thank you again, Aaron. We appreciate the great job. All right, item nine. Item nine is recommend approval of plans and specifications, maps three whitewater facility and Oklahoma River Boathouse District improvements and authorizing the city clerk to advertise for bids to be received July 29th, 2020, project M3-R008. So this is another piece of the work that we've been doing at the river and Tony Blatt from Hornbeak Blatt is here today to outline what's in the plans. Tony. Thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Chair and committee members, uh, this is phase two of our whitewater facility improvements project. Uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, it is a renovation of the second floor within the building. And it is a, could you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So this is a renovation to the second floor of the existing Whitewater building. And then it's the incorporation of a four person zip line on the north side of the property. Uh, the renovation is gonna include meeting rooms with movable walls for flexibility. It's got new restroom facilities to support the occupancy load of the upstairs space. We have a couple of smaller conference rooms for smaller meetings. 
Uh, we are capturing a space that's currently exterior, but underneath the existing roof for an epic deck that will overlook the surf machine that's currently under construction. We're creating an exterior egress stair that can allow us to have two means of egress from the new space upstairs due to its occupancy load. We're gonna expand the footprint of the kitchen. We're not gonna do any new kitchen equipment, but we're gonna prepare ourselves for whenever this new vendor is on board and we have a new meeting room space above that we can support that with an enlarged kitchen footprint. And we're also gonna renovate the bar space uh, below that's adjacent to the kitchen. We're gonna have a, a dumb waiter incorporated so that we can move food up and down into the meeting spaces without going through the public areas. And then additionally, we've got that zip line four person zip line that we're putting on the north side of the project created as an ad alternate to protect the, the budget that uh, we are holding to. If you wanna to go to the next slide. So this is an overall site plan of the project. It shows that we've got the, the building renovations happening primarily within the envelope of the existing Whitewater building. Uh, and then we've got the location of the zip line that's going to be along the north property, starting from, launching from the northeast corner of the property and landing down at the southeast or northwest portion of the property adjacent to the current river channel. If you want to go to the next slide. This is the interior space of the ground floor of the existing Whitewater building. The, the light blue colored areas show construction that is above the ground floor area. The dark blue are our methods to uh, egress. We have a new grand stair inside that you will walk up to the second floor. We have a new elevator constructed in an existing elevator shaft. And then we have two new stairs that are exterior that can take people off of the epic deck and off of the west egress stair, which has also got an integral viewing balcony. The yellow area shows the renovated footprint for the kitchen. It's just an expansion for a future addition. And then it shows the renovated bar with the dumbwaiter located so that we can take food up and down without going into the public space. And with the displaced offices in orange, we're creating just three areas that are going to utilize existing space for three enclosed offices. If you want to go to the next slide. So this is the upstairs space. The dark blue is the exterior decks and the grand stair and elevator up to the second level. Uh, the orange spaces are the large meeting rooms that have movable walls that can create one large open space. It gives flexibility for the sizes of spaces that could be used or leased. The, the smaller yellow area is a conference room that's by the grand stair for a smaller, more private meeting. And then we have another yellow space that's right out on the corner. Uh, it opens out onto the viewing balcony that will view towards the west. It has windows into the two-story space that can ultimately look out onto the river. And then the light blue area shows the, uh, up, uh, the new toilet facilities that will support the new occupancy load. The gray spaces are basically storage and support for this new meeting room renovation. If you want to go to the next slide. This are, these are a portion of our construction document showing what the exterior of the building is going to be. <clears throat> Essentially, what we're doing is we're keeping the existing vernacular so that it looks like it was here from day one. The exterior stair on the west side is clad with a metal material that is opaque where the stair structure is, and it is perforated when it is in front of existing windows. So existing windows still have a view to the outside. It also shows a cable rail construction so that it's transparent uh, guard is able to uh, overlook the west side uh, from the viewing balcony. And both of these are from the same side, one directly on and one from the north. And then this is from the east side. It shows the location of the proposed epic deck. This is a two-story space that is uh, covered in the current construction. We're going to capture the upper portion of the space, create an elevated deck that can be leased uh, rented out for venues. It can also be an overlook onto the surf machine that is currently under construction and it has an egress stair that comes down uh, underneath the stair, underneath the current roof structure uh, to the deck surface of the existing whitewater channels. If you want to go to the next slide. These, this and the next slide are also up, uh, upstairs images of the meeting rooms. We've kept the existing material palette, both in uh, material and in color, blues and whites and grays. 
And then we've created, uh, or, or we're incorporating a sealing system that has an undulating edge to call attention to the uh, water motif for the property. And uh, that's gonna be utilized throughout all of the meeting spaces in the upstairs area. If you wanna go to the next slide. The zip line is set up as an alternate just so that we have the flexibility on bid day that we can manage the budget in the event that costs are, are um, above what was expected. We don't. We wanna make sure that we have the ability to release a, an under budget bid condition. So this is set up to launch from the northeast <coughs> corner of the property, travel in, in, uh, in parallel down to the northwest corner of the property. And the intent of the four lines is so that a family of four can all do this together as a group. It'll also allow uh, four times the throughput of a single lined zip line. And so that's the intent of the space is that we're gonna be able to get more activities for individuals who are already on property. 62 foot tall at the launch tower and slightly over a thousand feet in travel distance. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be a nice alternate to the facility. If you wanna go to the next slide. This is a rendering of that zip line showing the tower location on the Northeast portion of the property how it is adjacent to a current walk surface so that we can uh, enter the zip line structure from an existing sidewalk. And then the direction in which it travels and the view back to Oklahoma City as they're, as they're on the zip line experiencing it. And then going to the next slide. This is a summary of costs and time schedules associated with this portion of the project. The, the building renovation is estimated at $2,027,817. And then the zip line is estimated at $500,000 based on the conversations that we've had with vendors who provide these kinds of systems. We're a total of $2,527,817. And then our phase two schedule is uh, shown below, uh, including this meeting on the 25th of June and ultimately accumulating with a substantial completion estimated at the end of April in 2021. That's the last slide that I have, and I'd be happy to answer any questions on this uh, phase two project. Questions? I have one question. Yes, ma'am. On the, when we say construction substantial completion, does that mean that construction will be to a point that the facility can open and operate without being encumbered by further construction? Yes, yeah, open and, open and used for its intended purpose is what we're looking at in April. All right, thank you very much. Other questions? All right, you approve it. It has been moved by Todd Stone, seconded by Bob Nalen. Uh, those that vote electronically may vote. Lisa, if you call them. Mr. Dover. Aye. Ms. Morales. Thank you. It has been, uh, it, it, it's been passed and adopted. Thank you. Thank That's you. Item 10, David. Yes, item 10 is uh, recommend approval of change order number one, MAPS 3 Whitewater Facility Double Occupancy Surf Machine. And this is a decrease of $122,206.69, project M3-R008A. So Downey Contracting continues to be a great partner with us on this and identified some opportunities to make a little bit of change on the facility and save a significant amount of money. So that's where that comes from is they, they moved one of the little buildings that has some of the equipment around a little bit and we're able to, to get $122,000 out of this. So this comes with the approval from the subcommittee. Question or discussion? This has been moved by Bob Nalen and seconded by Todd Stone. Vote electronically and lease will come the roll. Mr. Dover. Aye. Ms. Morales. Ms. Morales, are you there? Yes, aye. Thank you. 
All right, it's approved. Item 11, David. <clears throat> Item 11 is recommend approval of change order number one, MAPS 3 Modern Streetcar Mainline Additional Improvements and Increase of $9,437.50 Project M3-S008. So this has to do with the uh, additions that the state safety office wanted, specifically the leaning rail mesh that will be put in there. So that, that fence is coming down in the next few weeks and the new metal mesh will be placed in there. When they did the mock-up from the original uh, design, we felt like it wasn't heavy duty enough. So we've upgraded the gauge of the metal mesh that goes in there. And that was the, the uh, $5,400. And then there were some additional railing clips that were added to help stiffen that also. I, I want to add that we did not have a, a streetcar subcommittee meeting this month. Mr. Harding and I discussed this and didn't see that this was significant enough to put a meeting together um, for $9,000. So we brought it straight to the board. We will take it back to the subcommittee as an informational item. Questions or comments? <laughs> All right, it's been moved by Nathaniel Harding and seconded by Kimberly Lowe. Uh, 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 we'll go to electronic results and we can call the roll. Thank you. Mr. Dover? Aye. Ms. Morales? Aye. Thank you. It, it has been passed and approved. Item 12, David? Item 12 is recommend approval of amendment number 12, MAPS 3 Program Consultant Services Contract with ADG PC, a fee increase of $1,091,799.32, retroactive to July 1st, 2020, project M3-G001. Um, the reason it says retroactive to July 1st is because when it gets to council, it will be passed July 1st. Um, this is the annual amendment for the ADG services that you've seen uh, every year. And uh, what ADG provides us with support services within the office and, and review services, but also they have full-time people out on some of the project sites and people that at least go out there once a day as my project managers do. So uh, this is for about six months of continued convention center. There's a gentleman out there full-time out there eight hours a day overseeing what's going on. Uh, this also, is for a, a guy who's at the park and will be there till we finally uh, close this out and then beginning on the lower park. So that'll be in the next year. We'll start that lower park construction. He will continue to work out there. This also includes the things that we project into the next year, like uh, two uh, senior wellness centers, the work that we just talked about at the river. Um, I think that about covers it and, and oh some more there there is additional trails that we will build and because still a balance the sidewalk budget there will be some more sidewalks so uh, there's a lot of work included in this number so I'll, I'll try to answer any questions you might have jason cotton is also uh on the line if you have any questions questions for david david this is bob nealon uh it, is this, I assume this is just an estimate of what the cost would be. Is there any adjustment as we move along through the next year? If it mm -hmm. turns out that ADG is having to do more or less than what uh, is estimated at this time, or is this just a fixed number that they will get regardless? Yes, sir. That's, that's a really good question. It technically it's a fixed number, but this year we did see because the, the lower park was pushed and, and the, the, wellness centers didn't start exactly when we had predicted that ADG did give us a $250,000 credit from last year's amount. So Jason and I have worked to that. It's, it's really a negotiation process. And yes, there are credits for things that, that don't get done. And I assume likewise, if it turns out they have to expend more time and energy than anticipated now that there might be an upward adjustment. There could be, there's, there's a line item in the contract for what we call additional services. So if we need them to go out 
and survey something, or if we have an, another project pop up that we need just a little bit here and there, we have that line item that we can assign to do some of those things. Um, that is a possibility, but I don't think it's a big risk. Okay, all right, thank you. Other questions? Shall we approve it? And moved by Beverly Lowe and seconded with Michael Adams that we approve it. Further discussion? Let's vote. Let's vote. Mr. Dover? Aye. Ms. Morales? <coughs> Ms. Morales? Aye. Mr. Harding, are you still online? Thank you. It passed unanimously. That takes us then to uh, item 13, new business. David, do you have new business to present? No, sir, we do not. Any member of the subcommittee of the Citizens Advisory Board have new business? All right, then let's go to item 14. Any subcommittee reports that we haven't already heard about? All right, then let's go to item 15, informational items. Uh, you have before you uh, the informational item about the vice chair for the coming year. Uh, David, do you want to fill us in on how that works? Well, yeah, we've, we've pretty much just had a rotational basis. So uh, Bob Neelam will, will assume the vice chair role for the coming year. You know, the longer this goes on, the more important that gets, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have confidence in you. <laughs> All right. Uh, the second, the second item that I do want to uh, make a brief comment about is the resignation of Sue Hooper. Perhaps all of you uh, saw the letter of resignation which she submitted, and know that she has, uh, she and her husband have uh, changed their permanent residence to Florida, and she submitted her resignation. I've been in touch with her to tell her how much we appreciated the work that she had done, but. My question for staff is, it seems to me as though we ought to do something more formal than that, just a personal note from me. And I wondered uh, as this, uh, as a body, if we would consider a resolution of appreciation for Sue. She's been a, I would say a stalwart member from the inception of this process and uh, has given a great service to our city that I think needs to be recognized in some meaningful way. Any other thoughts or comments about that? I agree with that. Uh, not only your sentiment, Mr. Chairman, but also the need for recognition of all the hard work that she put in it, especially in the early years when she was running her consulting business and traveling a lot and being able to keep up with the demands of this, um, this very active and volunteer position. Yeah, I share Kim's view. I think we need to have some uh, formal recognition. I don't know the mechanics of that, but uh, whether that's just something council does or this board does, but one or both need to do that. David, my thought would be we would have a resolution of the Citizens Advisory Board that commends her for her service to this project. And then I, maybe that we take a resume a, a recommendation to the council that they recognize her effort in some way as well. Uh, you you want to talk through that with the staff, David, and maybe with Craig and perhaps bring us back a recommendation at the next meeting as yes, to how sir. we might do those two. Yes, sir, I will. I, I think that's a great idea. Okay. Any other comments there? All right, then that brings us to item 16. Uh, David, it's been a really interesting and productive meeting. Uh, anything you want to add about what's going on? I just want to add that work continues at the convention center. It's really looking great. There's some pieces inside the convention center that are becoming uh, really close to finished. Um, I, I did want to, to provide a tour for this board and the subcommittee, but 
um, situation has, has gotten to where it's, it's become a little more difficult, but we'll see what we can do in the near future. Um, as far as senior wellness, work continues. We have one of the, the preliminary reports in the office and hope to be bringing that to you soon. So still real busy and moving along. David, this is, this is Zane. I've got a question about the health and wellness centers. How has the, the COVID situation affected those centers? Well, they were shut down while the gyms were shut down uh, based on the stay at home. Um, I believe that they are back open right now. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for David? All right, then that brings us to uh, comments by board and staff. I want to start with one question, David, for you under uh, item 17, and that is, uh, I know that there are many uh, city uh, meetings of all kinds, including the council and other boards and commissions. Has, is there any, uh, is there any uh, movement to start having actual meetings rather than virtual meetings? Or what you're thinking about that? I, I don't see that in the near future. The the maps for Citizens Advisory Board will be in person, but that's because it's the very first one. We wanted to have that first one so people could actually meet and see each other. Um, beyond that, I, I don't know. The other issue that we have right now is council chambers are being remodeled, so they're not even available till after August. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll continue to monitor that and, and keep you updated. All right. Well, that's fine. It seems like it's always better when we can get together, but I, obviously there are all kinds of uh, factors to be considered. So just keep us advised about it. Anyone yes, else with comments, David? What's all right. Any, any staff comments? Uh, do we have any uh, citizens who have presented questions or comments that need to be considered at this time? No. None have been presented, and so we have none from citizens. That brings us to item 18 on the agenda, which is adjournment. Uh, I believe that the meeting can be adjourned without motion. Is that right? If there's no further if business no coming forward, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, guys. <laughs>